When thinking about the function of the cooling system for an internal combustion engine, it needs to be remembered that the purpose is not so much to keep the engine cool, but rather to prevent it from overheating. I have worked on many vehicle types over the years, vehicles which have operated in a wide range of environments from sub-zero through to blistering heat, from muddy off-road applications to race-ready track bikes. One thing that I have learnt is that more often than not, a cooling problem is often due to a combination of faults, or rather components that aren't working as well as they should be. The compound effect results in the cooling system often being unable to maintain the desired operating temperature of the engine, and usually resulting in a cloud of steam blasting out from the bonnet. From the day a vehicle rolls off the production line, its components begin to degrade. The more harsh its working environment, the faster the demise. Combine this with a dubious service history, compromised repairs and poorly skilled mechanics and it's only a matter of time before the faults develop and a cooling system failure occurs. Sure, cooling systems have in many ways become more efficient, allowing smaller, lighter radiators. Though it must also be said that systems have become far more complex too. With more components comes a higher risk of failure. Just ask NASA. I think it's pretty obvious that a cooling system must be watertight and be able to remain so under pressure. So I won't be covering anything to do with water leaks during this presentation. So first, let's take a look at the various parts of a basic cooling system. The humble radiator. Radiators can have problems both inside and out. Make sure you inspect them properly. The radiator's main role is to act as a heat exchanger, facilitating heat transfer from the coolant into the air passing through the radiator. Blocked or damaged external fins reduce the radiator's ability to dissipate heat into the passing air. After the fun comes the drive home. That's usually when the problems come to light. No wonder this 4x4 had heating problems. Bent radiator fins completely block airflow, reducing the radiator's ability to dissipate the heat. The corrosion of the fins is common on older cars. Blocked internal pipes restrict coolant flow. It may be a recent radiator, but doing a flow test is critical to diagnosing problems. Problems are often caused by improvements made by the owners. Front mounted fans, for example. The motor blocks the radiator, causing a hot spot and reduced cooling. Big bull bars and winches greatly reduce the airflow through the radiator too. Cooling fans. Overheating at low speed in traffic can be due to poor operation of the electric cooling fan. Or, in the case of engine driven fans, as they usually have a viscous clutch, these are thermally activated by the heat from the radiator and often fail to fully engage. Missing fan cowls can also reduce fan efficiency up to 70%. Radiator caps play a critical role in cooling system performance. They not only act as a pressure valve, they are responsible for allowing coolant to return from the expansion tank as the system cools down at the end of a journey. The main seal stops coolant leaking out from the radiator. Check the mating surface for corrosion and imperfections. A leak here will not only cause coolant to leak, but also prevent pressure buildup in the system. The pressure relief valve seal. A leak here will prevent pressure buildup, but no external leaks will be evident. Check the mating surface in the radiator too. A system running at atmospheric pressure will prevent the boiling point of the coolant to be raised to the desired level resulting in system failure at lower temperatures. The vacuum valve, which is often overlooked, 
This is usually spring-loaded in the closed position. It opens when vacuum occurs as coolant in the system cools down. It allows coolant to return from the expansion tank to compensate for the reduction in volume of the coolant as it cools. The vacuum valve rivet. There must be no movement between the rivet and the valve itself. If there were, we'd have the same problem as failed pressure relief valve seal. The coolant system will not attain the correct operating pressure and therefore the boiling point of the coolant will be reduced. Thermostats often cause issues. Running plain old water in the cooling system allows corrosion. Over time this causes a multitude of problems. Here a thermostat has become seized open. It could just as easily be seized closed, preventing flow to the radiator resulting in an engine that will quickly overheat. Here the head gasket has failed. The only fault evident was engine oil slowly seeping, seeping into the coolant system. Over a long period of time this coagulates with the water greatly restricting water flow. Sometimes the failure is obvious. However, always test thermostats for correct operation. Even brand new units can be known not to meet specifications. Always fit the thermostat with the jiggle valve or orifice at the 12 o'clock position. It's there to help trapped air bleed out of the system. Always use genuine parts or an aftermarket supply you can trust, often trying to save a few dollars, can backfire on you. Water pumps, the heart of the cooling system. With many components, the water pump has a high chance of failure. It may be an obvious external seal leak, or maybe a corroded impeller. Maybe the impellers come loose on the end of the shaft or there are collapsed bearings causing the impeller's misalignment. Or maybe the shaft has just failed. Removal and inspection is often the only way to diagnose some of the more quirky failures. Coolant pipes provide the network. These two can have their fair share of problems. Corrosion within the cooling system due to lack of coolant additive affects all the components, including the hoses. This restricts flow, reducing the system's ability to transfer heat away from the engine. This buildup of rust also reduces coolant flow through the engine's water jacket. Throughout the coolant's journey around the system, its flow is restricted. A simple coolant flush isn't going to get this system back to 100%. If there is rust in the radiator, you can be sure it's all around the system even in the heater matrix. The customer expects you to do the job right first time. It's important to replace all the affected components and bring the system back to as close to 100% efficiency as possible. Replacing just the radiator and doing a coolant flush often isn't the answer. Don't just replace the main radiator hoses. It's often a small heater hose hidden away that will fail. The customer paid you to inspect the system. Replace all the hoses. But remember, always do a coolant system pressure test and check for CO2 in the coolant system. Maybe the head gasket has failed. And don't forget to do this before you start stripping out components. Or was the head gasket a secondary failure due to the cooling system's inability to do its job effectively? We all know cylinder head gaskets can fail if the head becomes warped, but are you aware of the other problems that can cause the premature failure of the head gasket? Well, just like the coolant, engine components expand as they warm up. Old engines used the same material for the head and the block, so both expanded at similar rates. However, manufacturers have, in recent years, opted to use lighter materials, such as aluminium for cylinder heads. As we know, metals used in an engine expand at different rates. At normal temperature, the expansion is factored in. As temperature increases, 
different expansion rates create problems. For instance, the coefficient of thermal expansion for cast iron is less than 6. The coefficient of thermal expansion for aluminium is over 13. This means that the aluminium expands a lot more than cast iron at the same temperature. The cylinder head is tightly bolted to the block. Steel head bolts do not expand as much as the aluminium cylinder head. As the head expands, the head gasket may be crushed. The damaged head gasket may then allow coolant to enter the cylinders or for compression pressure to enter the coolant. So, A or B? Was the failure of the head gasket the primary failure due to a lifetime of shear forces between the aluminium head and the block created by a differential in thermal expansion? Or was the cooling system in such poor condition that it was unable to maintain the desired engine temperature causing excessive clamping forces on and the ultimate demise of the head gasket? Or maybe it was something else. Look at all the evidence and ensure you rectify the primary failure and any secondary damage too. Otherwise, you know what's going to happen. The boss won't be too happy. Oh, one last thing. Overcooling. Believe it or not, this can cause premature head gasket failure too. Oversized radiators. Modified or missing thermostats. Bypassed fan control relays. Can also cause the thermostat to cycle open and closed due to the cool incoming water returning from the radiator. This results in thermal shock damage to the cylinder head and in some severe cases the block too. Yet no indication on the temperature gauge that there was anything wrong with the system. So after diagnosing a cracked head, ask yourself why? Maybe, just maybe, there was a reason behind the failure. Mechanics are problem solvers. Don't get lazy. Go the extra mile and find that primary failure.